Hi, we're now speaking to Dr. Kilgrove on her recent paper, All Roads Lead to Rome, um, about migration and using biochemistry on skeletal remains. Um, so Dr. Kilgrove, could you give us a quick summary of your paper, please? Sure. A uh, uh, colleague, Janet Montgomery, um, at Durham University and I, uh, used strontium and oxygen isotope analysis to try to understand uh, who migrated to Rome during the empire. We obviously know that you know, all roads lead to Rome, it's in the title of the paper, it's a cliche for a reason. Um, so many people came to Rome during the imperial period, millions and millions of people, and we have some archaeological evidence, we have some historical evidence, um, but up until this paper we didn't have any skeletal evidence um, of these people. So we, using isotope analysis, identified some people who were potentially immigrants to Rome. Oh, so the use of the isotopes, um, so why was strontium chosen and um, has this been used on other skeletal collections before? Sure, we, we, we did use both strontium and oxygen. Um, strontium comprised the majority of our sample um, simply because at the time uh, when we did that work, um, it had been the only strontium study on humans in all of Italy. Um, since we did that, between the time we did it and published it, um, a couple more studies came out um, in, different parts of, uh, in different parts of Italy. Um, but strontium has, has been used sort of throughout the empire, largely in um, England and uh, other places like that. Um, because uh, strontium sort of varies with the geography um, in a sort of very simplified way. Um, and oxygen varies with the climate environment um, in which somebody grew up. So we were testing teeth, first molars, um, which give you an uh, idea of where somebody was living between about birth and four years of age. Wow. Um, so what did these results show? Um, so were people, like basically where were they moving from kind of thing? Well, unfortunately, strontium and oxygen aren't like a GPS in your bones uh, or your teeth. It would be great if they were. Um, so we were sort of conservative in our approach. Um, the uh, Roman Empire, um, and especially Rome, is very difficult to work in isotopically because the Romans are importing food and water, and we had to take that into account when we're trying to identify the immigrants, um, which gave us sort of a, a, a broader range and fewer immigrants, if that makes some sense. Um, so in terms of figuring out where the immigrants came from, uh, we were also fairly conservative with that in saying, you know, they, in sort of assigning them homelands uh, that were the closest to Rome that were isotopically um, similar. Uh, so um, there was one who was probably from somewhere uh, like northern Italy. Uh, there was an individual who was probably from some place like North Africa, uh, and a couple of people who were maybe from the Apennines, um, but all of those individuals could have been from somewhere else that have um, that has similar isotopic signatures. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, so it was mainly um, men and children that were moving. Um, what reason do you think there was for this? <laughs> well, I... I, yeah, several of them were males. Um, unfortunately, we don't know when in their lives they immigrated. Um, so all of those people could have immigrated as children, which would be kind of interesting. Um, uh, but we know from historical records that largely men were immigrating, um, or at least that's what historical records tell us, um, generally for work um, or uh, as slaves or to get an education. Um, so it makes sense that some of these children might have come either as families, they might have come as slaves, they might have come as students. There are all sorts of reasons that people might have come to Rome. And unfortunately, we can't tell that from the skeletal remains. It would be great if we could, <laughs> but we can't. Oh, wow, that is really interesting. So the thought is probably that it was the children that might have been moving and then they've grown up and that's when they've then died. It's entirely possible. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, so what's next for the research? Um, these uh, skeletal samples, um, we're not going to do anything further um, with them. Uh, they are back with the um, Italian Archaeological Superintendency, so they might do further research there. Um, but my current work uh, is at the site of Gabi, which is just outside of Rome. Um, and I'm going to be doing similar isotopic studies as well as DNA analysis there, because the combination of isotopes and DNA can get you better resolution in terms of where immigrants were coming from. Wow, really looking forward to reading about that. Um, thank you so much for the interview. Um, we'll put a link um, to your um, blog for Forbes um, below, and we'll also put a link to the paper which was published in Plus One. Great, thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.